Nighttime skies in Chicagoland set the stage for 150 miles of racing in the Highline Racing League. Welcome back to Joliet, Illinois. You're watching the Westlake Royal Building Products Premier Series, and we are live on FTN in Chicagoland, one of the most exciting intermediates in all of the United States. We welcome you back with qualifying on the move. Four minutes remain on our timing sheets. I'm David Kreutz, joined tonight alongside Alexander Balderas, and currently qualifying is indeed on the way right now no driver has taken a time it was chad winstead fastest in practice and jacob Hom second quick and now we're getting into the mix here in joliet and chicagoland an intermediate that we've seen before with these xfinity cars however it's going to be nighttime skies so not going to be the daylight it's going to be completely different conditions very fair a little bit more simple for the drivers to get to grips with but by no means will it be easy to succeed here in such a stout field we're in the final half of the championship tour ramirez among others such as of course alan cumman tyler Snyder, we see him up there as well, our regulars. They're getting to the point where they're looking at the point standings and looking about how they can gain and keep themselves in the mix. Casey Heschel, one of those we've got to keep an eye on as well. Tyler Hampton. And tonight, there's a few differences. For the first time this season, we are using the Choose V, which we use in the truck series. So some rule changes and an exciting race to look forward to because our next race of this combination, it'll be next week. And Alex, you'll be competing there. So a lot to look forward to tonight with qualifying on the way. How are you feeling as we are just moments away from getting to the green flag? Well, a night race here in Chicago land is going to be one for the books. Night track, no sun in the air and no sun in the sky means cold track temperatures and more grip for these guys here on the racetrack. Fastest line out of anything is going to be the top. You're going to have to rip the fence if you want to be really that fast. You can run the bottom to save tires, but all in all, that top line is going to be one of the best lines to run all night. These guys, as they run the bottom in there, they have to worry about, too, the bumps. This track, old, old surface, has not, be, uh, has not been redone in, I think, in the, in the 21st century, has not been touched uh, since they paved it. And so now, all these guys are going to have to deal with the bumpiness. And uh, as the sun sets, the lights will shine bright on the racetrack. And uh, these guys are going to have a lot to contend with on this old surface. Now, this surface, as you mentioned, hasn't been repaved ever since initially touched in 2001. Chicagoland Speedway is a very young circuit and one of the many brand new intermediates of the 21st century, which we saw put into place as we moved on, of course, into the 2000s. Right now, Chad Winstead, the fastest man, Scott Zellner, jumps up into third and now jumps into pit road. Adam Bossy going to be coming into pit road himself in sixth. And DJ Stagner moves up in a second. Stagner, nice. Nice run there, and he puts himself up in the runner-up spot with just a minute to go. Casey Heschel going to go for a warm-up lap, timed at a 30.67, and coming through this time by, it looks like Heschel going to spin, and he will come to the line in reverse shades of Daniel Mosteller, and he's just going to limp it there to the start-finish line. Austin Bloom also going to be on the way. He's parked it. However, Jimmy McKee now going to get going, and after the excitement of last week's race, when we saw Jimmy McKee get it done, Alan Cummins roll today. It'll be different. He is the choose V and will not be actively racing. However, he'll be the driver who determines who goes where on every caution and restart, so look out for the orange number 88. It's going to look much different as a result of that quick change before we get going again. Less than 30 seconds here, Alex, before qualifying has concluded. Uh, how about that shoes V, which we have never seen in premier competition, but we're very familiar with it on the other side with our trucks. It's going to be interesting for the premier guys to have the shoes V come out now. Instead of just filing in where iRacing tells them, they now get to choose, like the modern NASCAR Cup Series and subsidiary series, they get to choose in what lane they restart. Similar to Iora, which we just had moments ago, where we had the choose cone on the front stretch. You either went down to the apron or you went by the wall. So in coming in premier competition, I'd like to see this more often because this is a fun way to sort of spice up the uh, uh, spice up the cautions as they're usually uh, quite boring. Well, we got a little more excitement, but it's for Alan Cummins, of course, a very disappointing circumstance. We saw the incident with him and Tyler Hampton, and we are our feelings on that one. We'll tell you this much. If you missed it, make sure to check out the replay from last week. Exciting, 
but we saw push come to shove with Kunman specifically involved. Let's take a look at qualifying results tonight. Chad Winstead's success as of recent, and he pulls back into the front row with the pole position over DJ Stagner there in second. Third spot going to be JR Houston. Houston very quick last week as well, but the strategy did not work in his favor. And Scott Zellner now going to be running in fourth in the qualifying session, putting himself just inside the top five with Kenny Brooks in fifth. His best qualifying. Qualifying run of the campaign so far with Roberto Ramirez in the sixth spot, seventh going to Adam Bazzi and Dylan Wedgwood, then in eighth. To round out the top ten, Matt Muir is there in ninth, and Montreal winner Lucas Lodato is position number ten. Going out to the rest of the grid, it's Tyler Hampton who finds himself in that eleventh spot, followed by Tyler J. Slider, Scott Wheeler Jr. And Dylan Poteet, Kendall Kerr, and Terry Brooks filing out to the bottom half of the teens. And then it's going to be Matthew Rodriguez with Corey Blevins, Jimmy McKee, and Jacob Hom rounds out your 20th position. 21st immediately after Jacob Hom tonight is going to be Colton Gardner. And 22nd then goes to Brad Cress in the number nine. It'll be 23rd going to Casey Heschelin, Austin Bloom, 24th, and and we see our penultimate row of drivers with Andrew Baker and Toby Wedgwood. Alan Cummins not starting this race as a result, of course, being relegated to the Choose V. So Connor Holden is going to be scored in 28th. And for the first time in his Highline Racing League career, Cody Busser this season making it up to the Xfinity cars. And the number 12 is with us again. He'll be starting in the 15th and final row. He'll move up to 27th as a result of Alan Cummins not being with the field tonight 28 xfinity cars and one formula v to boot and we are now pacing here in joliet winstead has looked very good as of recent he's a driver who coming into this season had to break through the barrier in season 15 and 16 to get up here as an oval winner but he's done it multiple times within the past year and is now perhaps coming into stride in the latter half of this campaign much like what we saw from defending champion Scott Zellner, who's coincidentally on the high side right now, as Stagner does not look to be with our lineup up in front. Now, for Scott Zellner, he was dominant in every race he showed up to last season, but he did not have a full-time campaign. Still won the championship off of those incredible performances. For Winstead, he's slowly but surely starting to turn it up, podium after podium, no matter the circumstance. He's gotten there, but... Maybe a chance to win tonight and go flag to flag. The strategy, of course, up in the air. 100 laps, not the longest of distances here, Alex. What's it going to take for Winstead to maintain a successful performance as we are moments away from hitting the green flag? Absolutely saving that right rear, David. You, you, need, to, uh, you need to have this right rear here more than anything because when you run that top side lane, it's going to eat at those right side tires, especially that right rear. You have to have confidence in that throughout this race because it de it depends this is a very throttle demanding track there's a lot of on throttle time here in the xfinity cars here at chicagoland awesome racetrack and i imagine this is going to be a phenomenal race but making sure that right rear stays in check not burning the right front and making sure that you stay out of trouble is going to be some key points here to win in chicagoland now we have some developments dj stagner and jr houston were given both eol penalties and so they will fall to the tail end of the longest line and uh, Kunman had extended the caution by a lap because I believe uh, J.R. Houston had uh, protested or at least appealed the penalty. So we will or should go green this time by as much as nothing happens. But I believe they will both start at the back of the field. JR is back there. We're looking at the 20 and DJ Stagner there too, which leaves Chad Winstead tonight beside the number one of Scott Zellner. So Zellner is going to move up and so is Roberto Ramirez here. So some championship contenders going to be right alongside each other as we are set to go to the green flag for the first time tonight. iRacing official pace car is going to leave the field B. Stagner, Kunman, and J.R. Houston, penalties of different degrees tonight. It looks like it's going to be Chad Winstead in control as we are set to go green this time by. Pace car drops in. Winstead going to grab a gear and get things moving. Green flags flying in Joliet. Welcome to Chicagoland Speedway.
Great start already for Chad Winstead. You can see here using those different lanes, he goes straight up to the top off of four over Scott Zellner and uh, Dylan Wedgwood. He finds himself in third in the battle with Roberto Ramirez. Lucas Lodato is there. That's your top five. He's there in that fifth position at 98 of Wedgwood running that top side lane. He's going to get a run here on Zellner. Does he dive it down to the inside? No, he doesn't. Chad Winstead confident running that top side lane. So Winstead gets the jump, and you'll see a few drivers you maybe have not experienced up in front all throughout the campaign. Dylan Wedgwood up to third, very confident with his qualifying performance. And if you look further back, there's also guys like Roberto Ramirez, who has been a consistent contender, but he's right there with right now Kenny Brooks. Brooks runs in six in the Canapolis Cannonballers machine, and right now he's doing a very good job of keeping it up high on the ramp back straightaway and getting that momentum in. And right now, you can see up in the wall, oh, Kenny Brooks going to have trouble. He's loose, and he's spinning. Kenny Brooks is going to make contact, and we've got destruction. Tyler Snyder involved. Caution is out, and Brooks finds trouble, and he will fade to the back and quick. Casey Heschel also going to catch a piece. Caution's out. Three laps in. We will use the Choose V for the first time in Premier Series history. Tyler just Snyder involved in that one. Looking back at it now, I uh, he doesn't seem anywhere near the wreck, but Kenny Brooks sliding across the track right in front of the 87. He may have had chance. He may have had a chance to slow down, but yeah, I don't know. A lot of people upset with that one. And Brooks in the wall just couldn't keep it up there. And that's really the big determining factor. I mean, Snyder ended up catching a piece there himself. We'll ride on board this time by with Tyler to see exactly what it was like for him. And as we loop it back, this is going to be the entire lap. So you'll see everything develop. Snyder was looking good on his own, was running in about 11th position at the time of the incident and now has faded back substantially maybe a few spots out of the top 10 as he ran with terry brooks it would look to be the battle for about the 15th position here so as kenny got in the wall he goes almost bouncing into matt Muir. Muir gets lucky and snyder really not much he could have done maybe diving down low would have been the best answer but snyder's race is i think over he blew the motor that is it and he is done already tyler snyder Done and done, just like that. Well, fast exit out here. We were only on lap three when that caution had come out. Now on lap five, as Chad Winstead leads it for Scott Zellner, Dylan Wedgwood, Roberto Ramirez makes up a spot, and now Lucas Lodato remains in that fifth position. Now, caution had come out early here, David, so I wonder, uh, would it be possible for... Uh, if, since Tyler J. Snyder's done, could Alan Kunman actually beat Tyler J. Snyder in laps by the end of this race? That's a good question. This is Alan Kunman. We can't get you a lot of info on him because he did not start the race, so the graphics don't work. But the Formula V you're looking at right now, that is the number 88 tonight. He's been relegated to a super small car, and he's playing the role of our choose cone. He's got the paint scheme on and everything. And for the first time in Premier Series history, it's Alan Kunman having the opportunity to be the truth. Got a good perspective of what's going on right now. And with Tyler Snyder leaving so early, I think Kunman in a very, very good opportunity to maybe fish in 28th tonight. And he's rolling. So he's going to slowly move back up. That will get him across the line. And as Kunman comes through, he's setting himself up nicely. The first ever use in Premier Competition. Well, say hello to Alan Kunman. He's usually the driver getting it done with the truckers, but given the circumstances, not able to race tonight, and now he's there at the start-finish line. So the rule is if you want to go to the bottom side, you go below Kunman. If you want to go up top, you go above Kunman. So that's a quick overview of how the choose cone works. You choose your position depending on your row. You can go wherever you want as long as you don't hit Alan Kunman. That is the big rule right now. Contact will send you to the back of the line, and hopefully you don't involve anyone else in it or you'll be in even more trouble as the race goes on so alan sits alone and chad winstead and company are coming across here alex first time ever and we're gonna see what it takes winstead most likely gonna go down to the bottom side and is gonna get the choice the first ever chad winstead opting this time to go high 
Winstead takes the top. He'll bring Zellner with them and Dad to the bottom. Looks like Wedgwood won't go, but Ramirez does. So Roberto Ramirez is going to make it by and pass our shoes cone. And you'll see him there in the distance. Kunman, very small Formula V, but visible on the relatives. You know where the cone is, even if you don't happen to see him. And everyone gets by without a scratch. Alex, juice cone error is here. It is indeed, and we already see some interesting things. The top three before that choose cone all had chosen the top now. And so Roberto Ramirez going from about fourth or fifth all the way up to leading the inside lane. So they technically score him as second because he is second on the inside. The problem is immediately off the jump, uh, both Winstead and Zellner are going to have the advantage. They're on the top side lane. But by that time, Roberto could score third. So this could get him two easy free spots on this restart depends on whether or not he actually gets a jump along with Winstead but we'll have to see Winstead still the control car Ramirez down on the bottom it's going to be a side-by-side -side fight we get to the green flag this time through dad's going to be high and he will get to control the restart as we come across the Geico restart zone go again Winstead rocket launch Ramirez not bad himself green flags out we're back on our way Winstead off with a great jump after the restart now as Roberto Ramirez and Scott Zellner along with Lucas Lodato are going to be battling for that spot. And that's about what I thought, David. He's going to get pit by a couple of cars, but once he can be by himself, I think he should be A-OK. -okay. To the inside goes Tyler Hampton in the 5 machine with the 80 or the 98 of Dylan Wedgwood around that outside lane. That top lane right now is just going to be too aggressive and too fast for a lot of these guys to keep up on the bottom. However, if it goes green... That bottom may be able to catch up the savior of tire wear. So these guys have to keep looking out for that bottom side lane. As a couple of spots made up, as uh, Ramirez actually drops down to where he was uh, pre-choose cone and is slowly dropping back. We thought Tyler Hampton was the man who would win last week. Of course, it was a fantastic event that we saw. Battle between he and Alan Cunman turned bitter with initial contact, and Cunman found himself out of it, and Hampton got away. But that's what we thought until we hit the four-lap-to-go marker when things changed, and Hampton from the lead got hooked up the track and decimated, and that changed everything. Eventually, Jimmy McKee and Scott Wheeler fought each other for the win, and it was McKee who got it done. So Hampton looking for that opportunity redeem himself he's quick right now and he's been gaining lap after lap he's made up just under three tenths so far you see him there in the number five looking high on scott zellner it looks like he's already seeking an opportunity to go for the race lead last four laps are any indicator that he's got speed he's got now just about 90 still to show for it as we come across the line again Lodato high Scott Zellner down low these two have battled each other time and time once more this time it looks like Lodato with a very slight advantage as he comes off the corner and Hampton is going to make it three wide Zellner down low Lodato the middle and now the five gets the breakaway and runs in a second I told you, David, if someone could be able to rip that fence, they would be bad fast. That's how you have to be fast here at Chicagoland. Ripping the board, and top is up there. He is absolutely running down Chad Winstead right now because he's running that super fast line. The problem is that does wear your tires quite a bit. Now, as he goes to the bottom, entering the low side of Chad Winstead, they're going to be side by side coming off the corner. Winstead's going to have the run, and now they're going to be single file once again. Winstead. Able to lead over Hampton now, but Hampton is going to use that outside lane to perfection as he puts his right rears right over the seam just above it. Winstead goes up. Does he block? No, he doesn't. Down to the inside now. Give it to Winstead as he leads at the line. 
So Chad Winstead with a very slight edge here. And if you look at the intervals on your screen, they're in the thousands of seconds here. 4 100 is going to be the gap between Hampton and Winstead at the line. And now 14 laps in. It looks like Tyler once again gets away. Chad Winstead now going to find himself on the back foot. Hampton good for the race lead. And now the number five looking to redeem himself and take the checkered flag tonight. Hoping nobody will deny him of such a victory. Lucas Lodano going to be in third firmly over Scott Zellner and Dylan Poti to the mix right now for fifth. Dylan, who has been able to come up very, very quickly so far. He came from a low of 14th in this race and now finds himself up in fifth. Not bad at all for Dylan, who's now put himself up inside the top five from outside the top ten. We'll see what if he's got a little bit more in him because you see there, he's running high as well. It looks like there's a little bit of a seam, an air package, shall we say, that keeps those drivers up there. You know what it's similar to? In a much more similar way in real world, anyhow, it's it's Homestead. And if you've seen the air bubble with drivers like Kyle Larson or Tyler Reddick, for instance, they will run up top and have a little bit of an air bubble, keeping them there, and it's perfection when you hit it just right. That's why Dylan Poteet, among others, has been able to make so much time. That's why Tyler Hampton's been able to take the lead. And once you get on that air packet side by side, you pack that air into the wall, and it almost keeps it as a buffer. However, you have to maintain a fine line because it is fragile. Going too hard in the corner, the car can't stick on it, you're going to slide right up into the wall. Go a little too loose, and, you know, you, won't, you don't pack it in enough, and that barrier doesn't stay there. So you might have it at the beginning of the corner, and then you might start to notice you want to drift up towards the wall. And uh, you just have to have one of those skills, especially for Chicagoland, being able to rip the fence within almost a fourth of a lane, maybe even a fifth. You can see how just how close his right rear is to the wall, being able to almost not pack a, uh, not pack a paper clip in between uh, con uh, Hampton's right rear and the wall. And that's just one of those things that is the beauty of Chicagoland. You don't see many tracks like that where you have to absolutely pack the wall like that. Homestead, you mentioned, is a similar one. You know, Darlington, I guess you could consider. But there really is no track like Chicagoland. Dylan Wedgwood having a bit of a piece of the wall there. Right side scuffs, but he will get away and currently runs in now 11th. So not a big deal there, but they're coming three wide with DJ Stagner, Matt Muir, Wedgwood, and Bozzi. Stagner started the back of the field as a result of that early race penalty. And as such, now it's going to be the number 64, the Raging Cajun, up into the middle of the field trying to make some more gain. J.R. Houston is down to 22nd. Hasn't really been able to get out of the hole that he ended up being dug in into here with that penalty. Stagner, he's made that time up and now runs in 13. So looking good so far to maybe make up a few more positions, but that remains to be seen. Side by side, Ramirez and Scott Wheeler. Wheeler down to the bottom and Ramirez slowly but surely losing positions. Not major losses, mind you. He's still in the top 10. Terry Brooks waiting in the wings. You have to wonder if there's anything left in that 42 here in regards to moving up the ladder. Roberto Ramirez, who ended up missing one race, and that was overall Kern County, the one to miss. He's returned. He's kept himself quick. And Scott Wheeler, last week, second by just 40 thousandths. I know he wants a victory. He's been waiting several seasons now. Hasn't gotten there. His triumphant season 14, a championship to remember. But since, been a little bit of a cold streak for over a year now. He's got the speed. He shows it again. And now, he's starting to look back up there to try to get inside the top five. And then you got Roberto Ramirez in front of him, along with Matthew Rodriguez. These guys really trying their hardest to get back up there. It was kind of see. It was kind of weird. Seeing uh, Ramirez slide as far back into the field as uh, as he did, I thought he was going to lose maybe one or two spots. Was not expecting him to slide back all the way to sixth. Now at the cusp of that top five is Dylan Poteet ahead of him, Zellner, and uh, Lodato and Winsett now leading that pack as Tyler Hampton has started to uh, drive away here. And he's driven away by quite a large margin over almost a, almost a second now over Winstead as the gap is about 0.8 of a second. Now Tyler Winstead surely pulling away more and more. You gotta wonder here, is he just better at the tire saving or is he being aggressive for the sake of it? Because so far, it looks like there are some drivers quicker. 
Tyler Hampton, he's been quick, but Chad Winstead was in the 31-3 category, where that time by, Hampton was in the 31-5 category. So, there's a chance that Hampton isn't all too invincible right now. If we look at the trend for Chad Winstead particularly, yeah, he's gained recently. This is really going to settle the score and see if he's still gaining, but it was a high of 0.89 seconds the gap. It went down to 0.73 at lap 22. At lap 23, it's a 0.62 second deficit. So Chad Winstead is quicker now, and Hampton going all out to get the lead, maybe banking on a caution to bring him all down to earth. But for Chad... I think now he might be the quickest driver again. So keep your eye on that number 60 machine. We'll take a look further back in the field. Adam Bozzi with Chad Winstead no longer. It's Scott Wheeler with the 27. And they'll be side by side coming through this time by. It looks like Bozzi going to have a good chance to stay there with the 97. Couldn't get the pass. It's looking low for eighth. And that's one thing that's great about Chicago. You see these mixture battles all across the racetrack, like the one we're seeing right now for that 10th position. DJ Stagger just managed to pass Matt Murr. And all of these guys are starting to battle it out here for these, you know, lesser positions. But uh, battles go around all over the place. Scott Willow Jr. right up to the back bumper. Alberto Ramirez in the 42 is now he dips to the inside with help from Adam Bozzi. He's now picking to see which way they both go as now the 42 will run that higher side lane. But Scott has been really good on that bottom lane. He won't have the exit compared to the 42, but he will be side by side. Now, Bozzi looks up, goes to the top, as uh, these two have been side by side now for the past two laps or so, as the 42 almost scrapes the wall. And that's what happens when you, uh, when you kind of push the cushion a little too much. You know, you get really, really close to that wall and it starts almost acting like it's gonna suck you into the wall almost inverse of what it normally would do. But right now, Scott Wheeler Jr. still on that losing streak. Would love to gain these spots and now get back up to a top five position as he's now on the cusp. He's right now eighth. But if he did get past uh, Roberto Ramirez, you could see if he could make up a couple spots and maybe get in that top ten to set up for a win. You know, it's hard to refer to racing as losing streaks because for so many drivers in this series, they've been on losing streaks, so to speak, longer than Scott Wheeler. Wheeler, an established veteran, a two-time champion, simply hasn't found the way back to victory lane, which is something unexpected given his successes as recent as middle of season 15. He was toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jimmy McKee for most of that campaign, coming hot off the heels of an amazing season 14 campaign. Ever since, it just seems like fortune has not done him all too well, and he's surrounded by winners right now. Bozzi, multiple wins since that point. DJ Stagner, multiple wins this season and alone. Roberto Ramirez, a multi-time winner in that time frame, all the same, and a contender for the points championship, too. But for the driver's perspective, I know it's something you've experienced. It sometimes feels like that streak starts to add up on you as an individual rather than racing the entire field, almost as if you really can't get there eventually. And you ended up breaking a substantial year -long, years long streak, shall we? make it very clear in Iora and that's something that sometimes takes all the pressure off you allows you to run even better Stagner looking down to the inside of Ramirez Stagner's had a way of winning but hasn't been so consistent in the tenders that's been his big thing but Wheeler he's consistent he's been up there he's won this championship before he's just gotta have to take a toll on him knowing as you said Alex sometimes it starts to feel like that losing streak on the driver's side yeah, you know, for a long time when I was running in Iora, I found myself in the bottom half of the top 10, maybe even top 12. But after my win here in Auto Club earlier this season and my improvement over the offseason, I feel like I've been able to run in almost the top five almost week in and week out at select courses. And with Chicagoland being one of my best tracks, coming up next in the schedule, I'm really excited to see what happens now. But uh, as you said, once I broke through, I was able to get up there into positions I normally wasn't running in. And I feel like if Scott Wheeler Jr. can pull it off, his season might have a turnaround just like mine. Able to get in there within the top five week in and week out. He's been fast. We know he can be fast, and we know he's in prime position to win. He just has to, he just has to get it in the end. Eventually, I think there's going to be a chance that 97 returns to victory lane within the year. But Stagner now going around one Matthew Rodriguez and 51, who's been silent, has stayed inside the top 10 and yet shuffled down two spots. That's the 51 Matt Muir designs machine. And right now, toe to toe with Wheeler, going to stay neck and neck. All the while, the leading battle is somewhat stagnant. It's about half a second. Wheeler 
is right now in the mix for the bottom half of the top 10, but Winstead is slightly slower again. So it looks like Hampton has been able to pick it up once more. That time he was 26,000 slower, but it's it's relatively flat line now. So Winstead isn't making any major gains. Hampton is not having any losses per se, and it's neutral overall. Lucas Lodano might be the man who changes that here. He's coming up in the mix and finds himself in third. He's four tenths back on the both of them, and he was quicker that time by. But we'll see if it's much a trend if you look at the last four laps, and it looks like it's slight perhaps a minor advantage he has but at the line again there's really no telling that there's a big difference as Lodano has been fluctuating around the one second mark and your top three are a bit of a stalemate here aerodynamically speaking there might be an impact with that dirty air here Alex when it comes to Chicagoland in particular you think there's anything impacting these drivers short of the tire run well really with the Xfinity car we've seen time and time again how there's always going to be a little bit of mount uh, of dirty air, but this car has substantially lower dirty air compared to the next gen and the trucks. So you really get a sense of feeling what it's really like racing side by side with somebody, and that's why I really like the Xfinity car, especially here. It's all up to the driver. There is practically none dirt. There's practically no dirty air, especially at most of the Xfinity combos. But especially with this track, it is really coming down to driver skill. If you can save that right rear, you can save that right front. Basically, just your right side tires. If you can be able to save them on the long run and keep up that pace, you will be outclassing the field. As of right now, it comes down to complete driver skill. And uh, as we're seeing that out of Tyler Hampton, he still maintains about that 7 tenth second gap of the Chad Vinstead and then Lucas Rodato follows him behind. Then that top three is sort of rocketed away from a second back from Rodato. That's Poteet, Delner, and DJ Stagner. So uh, Poteet now the conductor of what is essentially the rest of the field leading up to Lucas Adana. So if we look at the front runners right now, everyone's slowly but surely starting to lose pace overall. That time by for Tyler Hampton it was a 32.038, and Lodato gets it right by Chad Winstead. Lucas up in a second. That time by he was inside the 31 second bracket. So. Perhaps an opportunity here to get a late run, maybe a long run driver tonight. Lodano could be as Adam Bozzi goes side by side with Scott Zellner. You look low, you see that number one. He's in, instead going to actually go up top side this time through and let Adam Bozzi run to the bottom side. 37 laps in, a minor advantage beginning to find itself in the hands of the 27. Perhaps now, unlike what we've seen previously, the bottom side can develop more and more. DJ Stagner trying to use it on Dylan Poti, and it looks like he might have a little bit more coming through on the low compared to other drivers in the past of this race. 38 laps in, we have seen lines begin to develop more and more. Rubber is being laid down. The bottom side is coming through here as the front runners may be starting to shift their preference. Bozzi, Stagner alike, taking passes on Dylan Poti, and they're taking turns on the low. Well, Adam Boz is going to go to the inside there of Poteet. Now with Zellner watching these two battle it out. And that's exactly what Bozzi wants to do. He wants to get him right to the door of Poteet and want to extend the track as much as he can because he knows Poteet's going to get that run off the corner, running that higher lane. He's going to get right up to the back bumper. And what a beautiful move by Adam Bozzi. Completely and utterly textbook there to get past Poteet. Now Zellner trying to find himself in the mix as well as Stagner is going to lead this group of four. As a Chad Winston has started to fall back now, Lucas Lodato in that 7 tenth of a second range to Tyler Hampton, as he actually is looking to close now to .629. So this gap ever closing, but uh, Chad Winston, my pick, starting to slow down a bit. He was our pole sitter. And, uh, but right now it's lap 40, almost halfway through this one, David, and pit stops are actually going to come up here soon. We're definitely going to see that 50-50 split, the way things are going. You can see now, Winstead, you're going to find himself in third, but there's drivers coming in already. Oh, Scott Wheeler Jr., a round out of four. Rodriguez is going to flip. Yellow flag is out, and it's going to be calamity. Caution out again. Where did this even start? Oh, my God. They went for beyond the turn into the front stretch still wrecking. Yellow is out and it is tremendous. Let's take an instant replay here and try to figure this one out from top to bottom. Oh my God, it's a horrible flip for Matthew Rodriguez. Looking back, I, I think it starts with Rodriguez too because he's up ahead. He does. Of Rodriguez, 
Right. He gets it up and he gets up into the wall running that top side lane, unable to save it as he drifts down the track, gets absolutely collected by Jimmy McKee. And then he's parked on the track. Oh, Austin Bloom comes out of nowhere. And we might need to bring out the tarps. Holy moly. That would be a real life tragedy. Matthew Rodriguez, luckily, no harm, no foul for him in real world. His car's done. Wheeler gets a piece. We're going to ride on board with Rodriguez. What a violent hit there for the number 40 crew. And what a good run it was until that point. It looks like one smack in the wall and much like Kenny Brooks, or rather, of course, we saw him earlier getting involved with the rest of the field. Rodriguez, similar circumstance. I, I think it went a little bit worse for him. I think that is it. Yeah, and that really does kind of suck because Jimmy McKee was starting to get up on, you know, through these guys who started to catch up soon. And one of the biggest losers in this is Scott Wheeler Jr. got tagged in the right rear, thought he had it saved, started drifting up the track, and then eventually ended up spinning himself off the wall. I believe he lost his front clip, his front bumper. But um, I I just got to wonder where Austin Bloom is. Uh, where, what, what is his plan? We'll figure out what's going on with Bloom. An update on Alan Cunning. He will not finish last tonight. He's in 28th. He got past Tyler Snyder, and he's rolling up to the start-finish line. Can you believe it? A Formula wow. V will not finish last. For the first ever time here in Highline, we have a multi-class race with the Formula Vs, and all of a sudden, it looks like Cummins in very good standing to go for a 28th place finish. Better than nothing, as leaders come across the field as for austin bloom he's down on pit road he's getting repairs maybe on his way out ball oh, that front end is oh he's done no way he's coming back out yeah i i don't think so either david uh that that involves so many guys austin bloom his night is over matthew rodriguez i believe his night's over as well and well he flipped i would assume it's over but uh a lot of these guys involved in that one and one of the biggest losers, I guess, for me is Scott Wheeler Jr. You know, we were talking about him maybe breaking over the hump and being able to get the win here tonight and just got tagged in the right rear, slid up and got damage into the wall. And so, I don't, I don't know. Maybe he could come back, but I don't have the greatest uh, feeling as I did earlier. That being said, Jimmy McKee going to find himself stalled right now. Maybe taking a little bit of a break from the sim to walk around and get himself back in there. You see McKee, he's one lap down and stalled, so he's been there for a little while. The 48 defending winner, he is damaged as well. Look at the backside, and we're going to take a better look. He's got it on, but it's it's hanging on by duct tape here. I don't know what he's going to do for the 48. rest of the night's going to be certainly much, much different. Heschel. Andrew Baker, Cody Bussard and company still driving 43 laps in out of 100. It's an FTN triple header night. Road to Pro just came to an close. They had an exciting race. And I'll tell you this much, Tyler Hampton, he chooses the bottom. So for this time, the number five gets to go by Alan Cunman. And he'll go under Alan Cunman this time, which he couldn't do last week. And he will take the lead with no harm, no foul. It's Winstead going high. Winstead will remain using that top side lane over DJ Stagner. Now Zellner, learning from his mistakes, he went to the bottom now. But be wary of the cautionary tale of uh, what is the 42 of Roberto Ramirez. He chose that bottom lane, had jumped up all the way from fifth to essentially second, scored on the inside lane. And he dropped back all the way to ninth at one point, was able to get it back up to about that eighth position now as he remains in eighth. So dropped a couple spots now as he's looking to get back up there. But a couple of change up now as Lucas Lodano second on that inside lane, followed by DJ Stagner on his right hand side, Scott Zeller and Adam Bozzi now. And then with the 31 of Dylan Pote, these guys are getting fired up for the restart. But Tyler, Tyler Hampton, interesting strategy to choose the bottom. Let's see how well it works out for him. Connor Holden has made it up to 10th on a silent night, and J.R. Houston is inside of the top dozen now after his penalty. Two drivers to keep note of who we have not seen for the first time. They've just made it through into the front-running pack. Green flags out again. There goes Tyler Hampton back on the move with a rocket launch. It's the five going places quick. Oh, 
Tyler Hampton is sliding. The leader's almost gonna go for a spin. They're gonna wreck out of four. And Ramirez is involved. Another caution and more chaos. And we are finding ourselves in more and more trouble by the lap. Yellow flag is out, and when we thought Hampton would be the cause, another incident occurs. Yeah, David, I can't believe I'm saying this. But we might have ourselves... That's another lap on the board for uh, Alan Cunman. So this Formula V is making up laps. He might finish third to last. Let's find out what happened here first. Another caution. This time, Ramirez got loose the same way Hampton did. They hit the same bump on the circuit. JR Houston catches a piece. Houston's going to end up sliding down. And you see there, Jimmy McKee also barely gets by. It's an interesting thing we're going to look at here. Tyler Hampton slid. He's in second now as a result. But they might have gone through the exact same groove, which led to the caution. Here's an instant replay. Maybe there's something here. And you look, it looks like the middle seam and coming up might have been the cause as we're trying to keep a watchful eye on Hampton. He comes through one and two, gets there nicely, runs down the back stretch. And as he goes in, stays high, and it looks like he gets in the middle groove and slides down low. Ramirez immediately follows. That's not enough evidence to say they hit the same thing, but they definitely had very similar starting moments to that incident. And the caution's out. Hampton gets lucky. Ramirez, not so much. The caution is out again. Well, David, you got to wonder if it is cold tires here. The sun is not out, and these lights on the track don't really heat up the track as much as, you know, one might think. But uh, now, on that tire, it's going to be loose. This combo is loose no matter what, and especially if you burn off the right rear. Like a famous saying that I always like to say, one slide and you're along for the ride. And that could be the case of Tyler Hampton now, as he will slot up back to second. But it, you saw him enter in the corner, and it seemed just fine. He started to cross over to the low side, and as soon as his right rear had crossed that bottommost seam, it was over. It seemed like he was sliding for the eternity of the corner, was able to save it in the end. But I don't know. Maybe it could have been that he had gotten loose off the cold tires. It may have been him crossing the seam. But as it stands right now, Tyler Hampton coming home in the second position as it stands under this yellow. He was able to cut up a few more spots. Just barely getting away from what could have been so much worse. Lucas Lodano now finds himself as the overall race leader. It's a different look as Pit Road got busy and now the number seven holds control. What's it going to take is the big question here for a driver like Lodano or Winstead. It's a six lap stint for them. We have some drivers on a brand new run like Tyler Hampton. Some on a one lap run like Blevins, Houston, Baker, Ramirez and Jacob Hom. Kendall Kerr is in the middle ground. He's on a five-lap stint. Interesting. He's on a very slightly different strategy relative to our timing. But he's there, and he is in 11. So 10 drivers on a really old set of rubber, and then there's the rest of the guys on a younger set. Lily Sobe in the chat rooting for Lucas Lodato, your race leader. And right now, it's the Cincy Light Chevy Camaro who's set to take on Alan Cummin. Cummin is 42 laps down, so he's... Lost 42 laps overall to our leader. He's come out for a few of them tonight. So it's not as if he's completely done and done. He is on lap five right now. The next driver to get to is Toby Wedgwood. Right now at lap 10. So we need six cautions in this race for him to finish maybe third to last and 27th. Cunman's made waves. Watch out for this Formula V as everyone passes by and Lodato chooses bottom. And that's going to be interesting, David, as a lot of these guys are uh, now switching lanes. Instead, still going with that topside choice as he has been almost every restart now. Belner swaps down to the bottom as we're going to extend the caution one lap. Now, DJ Stagner behind the 60 machine as it's Adam Bosley. And then the 81 on the inside, that's Connor Holden, followed by Dylan Poteet and Terry Brooks. So this top eight or so is going to be an interesting duel as the rest of these guys had fallen back due to the caution. Lucas Lodato now leading that inside lane with Chad Winstead leading that outside lane. So these guys having great lane choice again. Can Lodato put up that fight to Winstead? We're just going to have to see next time by.
Well, now we got a little bit of a different group right behind your typical front runners. Connor Holden is even up to fifth now, so he's made more waves than before. While Toby Wedgwood had early troubles and bowed out 27th, it is Dylan Wedgwood now up into ninth. Back in the top 10 yet again, we'll see what he can do as we're going to roll through with the number seven. Waiting one more time. We'll go green to the halfway marker at lap 50, a slight extension. Well, the pace car lights being off. We will go green this time by. So it's going to be an interesting restart. Some of these guys really haven't been in the mix. Holden was able to silently work his way up through the field, and now he's in that third position on the inside lane, and followed by Poteet. He's been in the mix as well, slowly clawing back after a kind of uneventful qualifying for the number 31, usually in the top five week in and week out. He just sits outside it in that seventh position. So looking to get... Another top five here from Chicagoland. A lot of these guys are going to be aggressive. These restarts have been getting increasingly more aggressive now as Winstead is uh, going to have that control in the outside lane, as does Lodato on that inside lane. And uh, it, it's worked for Chad Winstead about three times so far. And uh, it was a couple of restarts we didn't have all that great of a start. We'll leave it to the 60 on the outside to see what he can get done on this restart. And time to get at it once again. Winstead going to be up top. Your pole sitter has returned to the point. And Lucas Lodano still chasing his first Premier Series victory at Novel. A similar position to Winstead just a few seasons back. Will be a chance to replicate that same experience as we grab a gear and go green for the second half of this race. 50 laps remain in the hands of Lucas Lodano. We're back on the way. It's halftime in Chicagoland. Lodato with the jump of his life, able to get past Scott Zellner. Chad Winstead drops to third. Connor Holden now side by side with the 64 of Stagner as he tries to make up spots on the restart. Inside goes Zellner. He will slide it to the low side of the seven. Lucas Lodato will have to play defense now as Scott Zellner tries to come into the picture. Now as Chad Winstead rounding out that top side lane, he's going to get right behind the seven as they're side by side for fourth. Ladano going to have trouble sliding. Zellner able to send in the slide job, and he will take the lead. Now has to play blocker here as uh, as Lucas Ladano now tries to come in the picture. Gives him a little bump on the rear bumper now as Ladano now going to peek to the inside. Can't get it to work. Gonna slide back up to the top. And what a pass by Scott Zellner. Well, Zellner now going to find himself in lead. The man still looking for his first victory this season. Defending champion looking... I would tell you this much, slowly but surely better. It's been a slow burn up to the top of the ranks as of recent. And while he had early troubles in the first part of the campaign and might be a long shot to defend the title, Zellner still as good as ever. The all-time winningest driver in this league, showing once again why he's going to keep himself up here for so long. That versatility, it matters. Connor Holden is up to third, and he is looking better and better. The 81, we have not seen him up here all season long to this point. And now he's up there on pace in the Holden Wiener Chevrolet. Maybe an opportunity now for the Swamp to pull through. DJ Stagner being their flagship man, but that number 81, he's here too. And maybe a chance to push past Winstead as he did and do the same to the two drivers ahead of him here. But Alex, Lucas Ladano was very close and might have a chance to pull on. He's been absolutely up the rear end of Scott Zellner right now, looking for a chance at an opportunity to get by the number one car. They've been both running that top side lane. A little bit lower goes Zellner now, but Delgado's going to have that chance at that opportunity, going to get a better run off the corner exit. Now he's going to go to the outside, going to peak high as Holden is going to go with the seven. He thinks better of it. Now drops down to the low side. He's going to peak to the inside of the seven. Can Holden be able to use that white line and get past the seven? They're going to be side by side going back down the back straight away now as he's still peeking inside. But now Lodato has access to that top side lane. Doesn't go by the wall. As the 81 of Holden tried to make a slide job. No way to squeeze up in between Zellner and Lodato. 
and they're going to be battling it out as Zellner maintains his lead. So now the fight for second. You're going to see Connor Holden looking to the bottom side. Now it's going to be the 81 trying to bottom as most other drivers are now. The high side seldom going to be utilized in this second half the way things are looking. And we'll see what Zellner can do here as Lucas Lodano remains hot on his heels. Top three, top side. Most others going down to the bottom. Dylan Pote is also looking up top, but he's been doing a different all night long. Looks like he can continue to find the alternate method to his success. Looking for the back, you see Dylan Wedgwood, the final man of the top 10 before separation to Matt Muir. Dylan Pote is going to be there in 12th right now. He'll drop down to the bottom yet again. And the closest battle, currently speaking, is Andrew Baker as he will go right alongside the 42 there. That is Roberto Ramirez. Ramirez down to the bottom side side in the number 42 machine trying to lunge deep and it looks like maybe a shot to complete the pass but can't get it done yet as now there's another two by two battle Winstead DJ Stagner and Terry Brooks on the back side side by side racing has given away to the most exciting moments of this race but also it's led us at times to the trouble so now you gotta wonder 42 laps to go will the drivers balance their aggression or is it all of that going 100% from here well, I don't know if 100% from here really makes sense in the long run as the 87 and the, or the 81 and the 27 are side by side as uh, Lucas Lodano was able to pull away. Connor Holden now under threat from Adam Bozzi, DJ Stagner, and Chad Winstead going to battle it out with Terry Brooks rounding out this group of five cars all battling for that third spot, believe it or not. They're all going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and side-by-side -side as Holden is able to hold out over Adam Bonzi, but this battle isn't over. Here comes DJ Stagner running that top side lane. He's going to be behind the 81 of Holden as now these two are still going to be side-by-side. -side. Great run off corner exit for the 64 of Stagner. He's going to try and maybe split at three. Thinks better of it, but we'll see where he has to go in terms of one and two. He'll sit right behind the 81 machine of Connor Holden. He's getting that clean air right now. He's peeking his car where they aren't, so he's able to get a good runoff corner exit. And the man who has clawed his way up so far throughout all of this, Tyler Hampton. He's right behind the 60, and he is on his way. So Hampton going to have himself an opportunity to return. If we look at the highs and lows of his race, he was as low as 17th and is now up there inside the top 10. He's on a six-lap advantage. It's a 14-lap stint for him relative to Chad Winstead, 20-lap edge. As it stands, you can see there for the number five, Hampton he's right there, keeping himself a little bit of distance relative to Chad Winstead. As it stands, going down to the inside line, he doesn't choose to. He'll instead stay top. Hampton looking really good right now. He's got a six-lap edge here, Alex, and we've seen it before. That's a big, big difference. So, with that being said, he's got a little bit of time, and he's seen the other drivers battle profusely. The Swamp Motorsport drivers of DJ Stagner and Connor Holden might swap spots here. If you were Tyler Hampton in this spot, what's the best course of action? Well, that's something we're going to find out in just a moment. Alex is going to take a bit of a step back here as we see the 64 driving at it. Terry Brooks is up top here with Tyler Hampton. And once again, you see that number 64, a little bit more pressure. But instead, it's going to come from guys like Hampton and Terry Brooks rather than those ahead of him. It looks like now he's not going to have to worry much of defense. Connor Holden, his teammate, maybe going to make things a little bit easier. All the while, the Rage and Cajun has to... More about what's going on in the back. Jacob Hom is going to be going down a pit road. Unscheduled pit stop. 16 laps into a stint. It does not look like it's for strategy. However, Hom does go through. That's going to put him down at 21st as we look up to the final drivers on the lead pack. 20 drivers in the lead lap now. Jimmy McKee is in 20th. He's 24 seconds back on the leader. He's not really in the mix. Then you go to Scott Wheeler with damage. And there's Cody Buzzard, the driver in the number 12. A driver we haven't mentioned all too much tonight. However, debut on the season. And the Buckeyes number 12. Looking very good so far. Just holding his own and getting acclimated to the field once again. It's good to see Cody Buzzard returning here on the Thursday night tour. And he has been able to put on... 
a very solid performance given all the attrition and all the excitement that we've seen so far it's better to stay calm and collected than to wreck your equipment and that's a big deal with 35 laps to go we're getting closer and closer to the end of this race now adam bozzi gonna go down to the bottom side he finds himself there with stagner stagner goes up top he stays there but adam Gonna try to find a way to lunge down even further. He's got Scott Selner right ahead of him here. Maybe some assistance can come in the way of the number one, but I think it comes more to DJ because of that draft. And as such, 64 gets the run through, picks it up right behind the one. It looks like Lucas Lodato still has the lead. But Lucas getting more and more of that pressure. And Tyler Hampton will be the first of which on a new set of Goodyear rubber. Let's take a lap on board with Hampton and figure out what's going on inside the cockpit of the number five. Well, Hampton's been able to run that outside lane. And you could tell right there, getting around the outside of Bozzi. Now he's going for, uh, he's going for the uh, for one of Scott Zellner. Now it's going to be Stagner in front of the one. As he's been able to rip that fence, David, that's one of the fastest lines on the racetrack. And he has been able to almost exploit it better than any other driver. You'll see here coming up to the rear end of Zellner. Where is he going to go? He's going to go to that top side lane once again. Only driver to be able to rip the fence harder than anybody. You could see him right there starting to gain time on the one. And he'll slide just down low. Going to cut the apron. Maybe no, he's not. He's not going to cut the apron, stay behind that one car, but he is on a charge. And as is DJ Stagner, he is right behind the seven of Lucas Lodato, able to seal the lead a few laps ago. But now that lead under contest again as Stagner coming in with a run over Zelda. As he's going to try and make his lunch for the lead, they're both going to go to the outside lane. Zellner able to try and use stuff on the bottom. Now Stagner makes his large and makes his charge on the top. Going to go to the outside of the seven of Lucas Lodato. And now he looks to be peaking. Lodato can't block. And now that gives the top side lane to the 64. He's able to slide his way by. And they're going to be side by side, almost exiting off the corner. But look at the run the 64 gets. He's going to be able to slot it down to the inside lane on the seven of Lucas Lodato. Do we see a slide job here? He may get in the gas a little earlier, choosing the more... Whoa, he's going to get loose, and he's going to slide up the track, and he's going to put Lodato into the wall. Well, Lodato went up there himself. Both drivers are going to find themselves out of sorts, but it looks like Lucas gets the advantage. Lodato back to the race lead with 30 laps remaining. The final countdown from here on out, it is in motion. The 5 of Tyler Hampton side-by-side -side with Scotty Z, and it looks like now the 64 back into second. Quick relegation gives Lucas Lodato the advantage again. And for Lodato, it's always come down to these types of moments. Up in front, late in the race, at an oval, he's got the pressure, and usually it's something either self-inflicted or contact-related, sometimes a combination of both, that ends his race and a chance at the win. Right now he's up ahead, but he's got to keep an eye out for what's going on with DJ Stagner, Hampton on the new tires, who is inevitable right now, and we were going to ask you just a few moments ago here in the FTN broadcast booth, as you look on, Alex... What would you do if you were in Tyler Hampton's position, knowing how quick he is with the tire advantage? What's the best move from here on out if you were inside the cockpit? Right now, I know for a matter of fact that these guys are going to try and push harder on these last sets because it's the race is coming down to it all as Sagner is going to get loose and he'll be able to save it. What a block from Lodato. But again, right now, a three-wide pass around the outside makes up that Tyler Hampton now goes all the way from back there and now to second. And right now he has that clean air in front of Lucas Lodato as he's running the lower lane. Hampton runs that top side lane. That top seam is going to be the five's best friend as he is able to push on that newer set of tires. He's going to be the one to beat as far as speed goes right now. Lap 74 out of 100 here in Chicagoland. And things are starting to heat up even more. Right now, just on the edge of that wall goes Tyler Hampton. And he is within half a second to our leader, Lucas Lodato, and closing by the lap. Still making gains ever so slightly, and Lucas Lodato's got to wonder, what's the next move? We look back to Tyler Hampton's telemetry in the last four laps. It's honestly not as big a gain as you think. Now, that's, of course, partially due to the traffic. 
But still, Hampton that time by actually lost seven one hundredths of a second. So maybe it's the middle stage of this run where Hampton is not quite the quickest and he comes back in later. But this is a point where maybe Tyler Hampton is actually losing time. He's fluctuated around the four tenth marker for the majority of this run in position anyhow. So maybe. It's going to be Tyler Hampton now losing time as Scott Zellner is coming back in the mix and Lucas Lodato is stretching. Lodato's probably running more aggressive is what's going on here with 25 laps to go. And that's going to give him the advantage for now. But I don't know if that's really going to be the best place to go about it for the rest of this race. Matt Muir side by side now with Kendall Kerr. Muir going to go up top, try to get the run. It's good for eighth. And the number 70 gets by. Great job there for Matt Muir as Kendall Kerr find himself working low in ninth and Corey Blevins right there inside the top 10 home stretch here 25 remaining and Ladonna still defends for the top position well, Ladonna's been up there for quite some time after passing the one of Scott Zellner now Hampton makes up that spot on the one as he's about half a second behind Ladonna he's fallen back a little bit running that top side lane but that is still the fast lane for the five he has that tire advantage, and he could be saving just a little bit for a harder charge here in the closing laps of this race. But you're right, David. Time is running out now with just about 20, nearing 20 laps to go. If I'm in Hampton's position, I know I kind of start having to turn on the jets, and I have to start going now if I want to be able to try and pass Lodato. But again, this is a weird stage in the race where there's not enough time to save over a large course of the run. But there's also too much time to try and push it to the end 100%. So this really is going to come down to driver's skill. As Hampton now going to run that top side lane. Lodato looks to have checked up a little bit and uh, almost backed up his corner a little more than the five did. But down the front stretch now, Lodato to the line. The gap is going to be a 2.89. So now closing almost within a quarter of a second is that five car. And you got to wonder. How much further can he push before maybe things start getting detrimental? We're about to find out, but with 22 laps to go, we're going to crank it up with the best tire racing camera providers on the market. Visit trackcams22.com after tonight's event as we're going to get things loud on FTN. Let's crank it up with 22 laps to go.
16 laps remain. Tyler Hampton has still not put the Jets on. I'll tell you this much, Alex. Scott Zellner's there. And all of a sudden, now two drivers who are an older rubber have found themselves as the premier candidates for the win. But number one, a tenth of a second back, Lucas Lodato with the slight edge. All of a sudden, I think now we've got to look out for the driver of that number one. Scott Zellner in a good spot to maybe keep things going and perhaps finish with the win. Hampton going to get in the wall ever so slightly. Get passed by DJ Stagner and Shad Winstead respectively. And one more position update. Alan Cunman is in 25th. It looks like the Choose V has made up a few more spots as JR Houston is going to come in. And I think that is his night. He's substantially damaged in out 19th now and he will park it as a result we're in the home stretch indeed and now the final laps are a moment away Zellner in the mix for the race lead and Lodato still defending is it finally Lucas's night to win on an oval and you know it might be Lucas Lodato just now he's about one tenth of a second over Scott Zellner this battle has started to come down to the wire now as we're closing in on about 10 laps to go here from Chicagoland things are heating up for the lead. Lucas Adato holds a narrow lead over Scott Zellner, but Zellner has been able to close into the seven and start to eat into his lead at an exponential rate. Here comes Zellner trying to get a move made around the outside. He'll go down, follows the seven to the apron, now peeks back up high, and now he's going to try and use that higher lane and follow right behind the seven. You can see they're just more center speed than Lodato does but can't really do anything on the exit now as Zellner, maybe he can as he tries to make a move, but Zellner is going to peek down to the inside lane. Lodato has no choice but to side up, and now they're going to be side by side coming off the corner. Neck Zellner or Lodato. To go. And you tell me this much, Alex, we're now at the point where it's absolutely neck and neck. What's it going to take here? Does Zellner even have what it takes? As both lines have developed so well. Is it possible here to maybe break away for Lodato again? I mean, maybe, but he has to be able to know in the confidence that he has with his tires. He's going to have to take this to the win now as we're closing in on 10 laps to go. And so just five miles left to run for a lot of these guys, and that's going to be something that he has to set in his mind. Lucas Lodato, not home free just yet, but he is closing it after lap after lap is ticked off the board. But then Scott Zellner over DJ Stagner. Now Stagner starts to come with a picture too as he's almost just a couple tenths behind Zellner as he had slid back from Lucas Lodato. So now we have a three-car battle, maybe for the lead. And DJ Stagner tends to have the ability to come in oh so late and still give one battle to remember night after night after night. Multi-time winner this season. Got it done multiple times last season as well. And he's had no problem continuing to keep himself versatile no matter the scenario, no matter the equipment. Stagner is there. Ten laps remaining. 15 miles. That's the journey. And now Lucas Lodato is slightly extending it over Scott Zellner again. And that might be the point of no return. The race is far from done, but it looks like Zellner now is slowly but surely losing time. If he has anything left, he's going to have to show it sooner than later. But it looks like that time is approaching, and he is still not giving us the sign that he can go, go, go one final run. It's going to be now the single digits here, and Zellner going to try to slightly gain. He only gains about a tenth, or rather a hundredth that time by. So not much. But maybe the start of something here in the tail end as we have now put ourselves in the position where every tenth counts doubly so. I'll say that much. If you make a gain now, it's going to compound lap and lap in, lap in, lap out. And Zellner are going to come across the stripe this time by 1,500s back nearly. Maybe a little bit of a move up there as Zellner now does look to be ever so slightly quicker. Yeah, well, Zellner is now coming into frame as he is starting to close up again to the number seven car. However, we may have implications, David. Jimmy McKee is going to be a lap car, and he will start to enter the frame. He's about two laps down compared to Lodato, and by estimation of lap times, he might get here in about four or so laps, and that's going to be closing in on three to go. So we may see some lap car troubles here if Jimmy McKee doesn't get out of the way accordingly now. Within that two-tenths of a second range is Zellner, and he's been this close before. 
Last time he couldn't capitalize on the move around the seven, but he'll have to make an opportunity now as, as uh, the DJ Stagner machine, number 64 now coming into the frame as well. As soon as Zellner loses to Lodato, in comes DJ Stagner. It's almost if right when the one loses, the 64 just starts gaining almost a lot. Like you can see here, they're just now almost under a second completely between the top four. As in comes Winstead, as he's only seven tenths behind our leader. So they're all closing in on each other. And so now we could have a four car battle for the lead. Chad Winstead, maybe a chance for him to join the party here. We haven't even considered the 60 returning. McKee gets out the way. He does not want to go and become the choose cone driver. DJ Stagner going to stay right up top with Scott Zellner below, diving deep, trying to get something going. Five laps to go this time by, and it's Zellner up high. Now he's got a little bit of a run going in turns one and two. Can't look any lower because he just got blocked. Zellner. Right there with Lucas Lodato one more time. Can Stagner and Winstead make something happen down the Brant back straightaway? They'll go once again. It's a curved back stretch, mind you. So you can carry that momentum in that much more. And if you use it right into the turns, which Stagner might not have, he just made contact. That's trouble for DJ. Can he even get it going again? That's the question. Zellner, Lodato again. Four remaining here, Alex. And it is now all or nothing. Now for the one of Scott Zellner, it's going to be his prime chance and prime opportunity to try and get around the seven of Lucas Lodato, our leader now, as he's been using every single inch of the racetrack. Now, Chad Winstead want to make it clear, he's now within five tenths of a second, so he's gained two, but he's running out of time as well. Now, Zellner looking to the inside of the seven of Lodato, unable to try and make anything work as in comes Stagger. This battle is going to be epic for the lead as we come down to the final three laps to go here from Chicagoland. Lodato leading over Zellner with DJ Stagner in tow. Chad Winstead watching on from afar. Now, Lodato having a two-tenths of a second lead over the one of Scott Zellner. Does Stagner try and make a move around the outside of the one? Yes, he does. Coming to two laps to go here. He's going to use that top side lane, really get the run off the one. And he's getting a run, coming with two to go, Lodato leads. Popsicle sticks this time by Lucas Lodato, finds himself advantageous, and takes the lead in the one and two again. 15 one hundredths of a second. The big question mark now becomes DJ Stagner once more. It looks like right now Zellner firmly right behind, but that might change. Now Stagner going down to the bottom side and looking for a last lap moment. We saw a last pa lap pass earlier in the night with James Thurston fighting against Daniel Mostel. Now Stagner looking to make it two for two on the day. One lap to go. White flags out and DJ is quick. We saw this move made by Stagner in the Integrity of Night Series previously at Nashville. He went for three and four and got the win in just one foul swoop. But Lodato's defending well and keeps himself ahead. Now DJ going to get right by Scott Zellner with one last opportunity. He'll have to dive in deep and that he does. DJ Stagner looks down to the bottom side tries to get the run out of turn number four but it's he can't no do use. it battle for second but Lucas Lodano goes for his second career win and tonight he breaks through on an oval wow what a way to win it able to get it done here in the last 30 laps at Chicago land able to repass Zellner and stay over a hard charging Stagner that's a great way to get another win on your uh, on your on your career how about that for the number seven of Lodato something he's been waiting for oh so long we saw the potential last season he realized it with a victory in Montreal but he came back quick to get yet another and tonight in Chicago land 45 laps led most laps led by anyone tonight he does it and he does it with pride. It's the number seven, and it looks like the fans coming out, Lily Sobey, and, of course, Lee coming through for Lucas Lodano, back in victory lane. Shelly Babinshack, thank you for stopping by as well. Lodano due to celebrate as he's going to burn down the house again.
watching Lucas Lodato as he gets a little bit of a donut in. Uh, not much else. It looks like a simple celebration for a masterful performance. Lodato not skipping a beat tonight, Alex. And I think just before we say goodnight, we have a few people to talk to. Lodato, one of which. Let's get those race results up and get a word from the man who gets it done and all of our podium sitters. Lucas Lodato is going to win from Scott Zellner there in second, and then it's going to be Scott Zellner, of course, their third. DJ Stagner, position number two. Fourth place is then and there going to be Chad Winstead, and the fifth spot is going to go to Adam Bozzi, with six going to Dylan Poteet, and then seven, Tyler Hampton. Position number eight, that's going to be Kendall Kerr. It'll be Matt Muir in ninth, and to round out the top ten, it's Connor Holden, five seconds behind. Casey Hasho follows in that 11th spot, and then it's going to be Corey Blevins in that 12th position. Terry Brooks and Roberto Ramirez slide through the field to end up in the mid-teens. Then it's Dylan Wedgwood and Andrew Baker. Then Cody Buzzard in his first start gets 17th in the Premier Series. Colton Gardner there in 18th. Scott Wheeler Jr., unfortunate way to end his race. He ends up in 19th, and Jimmy McKee in 20th. Looking further on back, a few surprises in the 20s and on bracket, one of which we're going to talk about, of course, but 21st is going to be Jacob Hom, J.R. Houston 22nd, and Matthew Rodriguez 23rd, with Kenny Brooks 24th, and Alan Cummins, the choose cone, 25th tonight. Of the drivers who were able to get a start in, Austin Bloom, Brad Cress, Wedgwood, and Tyler Snyder are the final four, and just like that, Night of racing in Chicagoland has come to a close. We've got three drivers to speak to, and Scott Zellner, the first of which, landing on the podium tonight in the third position. Let's get a word right now from the driver of the number one, Scott Zellner, coming through, and we're going to speak with your defending champion. Alex, you're standing by with the driver of the number one as we speak. Scott Zellner, who comes through to round out the podium. Well to be in here for a good while scott zellner you come back into the top three tell us how you were battling there with lucas Lodato in the end able to come home with a third and a spot on the podium tell us how you did it uh just kind of learned that you should run the bottom instead of the top uh to save your tire for the end um i was definitely faster than him in three and four um just couldn't hold the run. And then uh, with like two or three to go, I tried to set it up so that I could get a good exit. And then uh, Stagner got to my outside. So I mean, it's a little unfortunate. Um, I like Lucas. Uh, don't really appreciate the way he ran me earlier in the race. Uh, almost wrecked me on the front stretch. So, I mean, I'm happy for him, but uh, it's going to take a little bit while, a little bit to cool off after that one. Well, hot-headed tempers here in Chicagoland. Now, Chicagoland is one of my favorite all-time tracks, especially with the Xfinity car. And from the racing we saw here tonight, I think it's no question it should return to the schedule next season. Yeah, I'm all for intermediate tracks. Um, it's my favorite type of track to run on. You know, it shows who can go fast and manage tires at the same time. Um, yeah, I love it. Let's add some more. Let's go to Charlotte, Texas. Add them all. Well, interesting mix of tracks that you have in their selection there, as well as I'm assuming you're talking about New Texas. But you come home in third in what was a pretty, honestly, a really relaxed race for the sum of it. You had a couple of hot flashes there with some wrecking, but you come home in third, and that was quite impressive. But uh, is there anything else you'd like to say or anyone else you'd like to thank? Yeah, it certainly wasn't relaxing in the cockpit. Uh, it's like driving on ice for a majority of that race, but... Uh... As always, thanks to my teammates at Four Horsemen, uh, Scott, Caleb, and Austin. Uh, no, Caleb can make it tonight, so that's a little disappointing. But uh, thanks to the uh, Westlake Building Supplies, and thanks to you guys for putting on the broadcast. And as always, thanks to all my family watching at home. Uh, glad to finally get a good run. This has been my worst season in Highline. So um, I guess it's a champion's curse. So hopefully uh, we're going to go get a win at Dover. It's my favorite racetrack, and we'll go from there. Well, congratulations on the win, and we hope to see you rebound and be in the booth many a time soon in the coming weeks. All right, thanks, guys. That was the voice of Scott Zellner in the number two machine, and then we're going to get a word with our second-place finisher, DJ Stagner. You come home in second place oh so close 
to passing Lucas Lodato, a great final lap battle. Tell us how it happened. Uh, yeah, it was a good run. Started 28-ish um, after the EOL and slow, methodical, worked towards the front and just, I don't know, there's some things in the last 15 or so laps I wish I could do different. A few mistakes here and there. Ultimately, you know, the difference is two car links, and that's, I could find two car links so many times in the last 15 laps. It's just one of those, like, man, if I could just, if I could only go back and do one or two things different, I would love to have that opportunity. But Lucas ran a phenomenal race, so shout out to him. And, I mean, he did not miss a corner, miss a wheel. He didn't do anything wrong. So, I mean, he ran as good as you possibly can. So shout out to him. Well, David and I were saying in the booth that you always manage to find a way to kind of sneak in at the end of the race. You could go under our radars and under our noses, and you come home second, and you able to slither your way up through the podium. And uh, we didn't expect you to, but you always find a way to get here in these races at the end. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just, I've always been a, I've always considered myself at least a decent tire saver. Um, and then combining that with just a little patience at times. And it, I mean, it, it goes a long way, you know, just being able to slowly, slowly, methodically work through there. You don't have to go from 30th to first in three laps, the race isn't over in lap three, the race ends at lap a hundred. So like, you know, I had a situation recently in another league where a guy got to the front almost instantly from the back but he didn't have anything to show for it at the end because his car was destroyed so you know it's just sometimes you just got to be careful and slow and methodical to get to the front and i couldn't agree more well in your charge all the way up to second it was an honor watching you cut up through the field is there anything else you'd like to say or anyone else you'd like to thank uh, everybody at Swamp Motorsports, I would like to thank the um, recipient this year who will not be named of the Holden Wieners Weenie of the Year, who is in this league somewhere, faceless, nameless, won't admit it, scared, whatever, doesn't matter, who's holding people to ridiculous standards about protests. I think I know who it is, I think, but I don't have 100% evidence. So to that person... Everybody else is going to start holding you to that kind of standard. That's a public statement to them to be very careful because now you have people watching you as opposed to you watching them. So other than that, that's had, had to get that off the chest. Um, shout out Swamp Motorsports, Ty, Connor. Connor ran a great race tonight. Uh, Connor was up there battling up front. So good rebound. Good day for him. Good top 10. Shout out to all those guys. Uh, you know, Just good, clean, good race. Nobody... Nobody crashed anybody intentionally. Nothing stupid happened. It was just good, clean race. Well, some interesting words being spoken there. But DJ Sagner, you have every right. You come home in second, oh so close to a win. And I hope that we'll be seeing you in the booth in the coming weeks. Thank you so much for your time. And once again, congratulations on coming home second. Thank you. Well, David, that was the voice of DJ Sag. They're having a few interesting words to say about the end of that race, but you're standing by our winner in Lucas Lodato. Well, let's bring the number seven right in. First time oval win in the Premier Series. Getting it first at Montreal. Relieving yourself of the pressure of finally getting through with the checkered flag. And it looks like you're on the up and up again. Winning here in, of course, the number seven machine. It's been a long time coming at an oval, and tonight it finally is put together in Joliet. What is it like? First oval win here, Lucas Lozano. It's got to be a great feeling. Yeah, very, very happy. Um, I don't really know how I pulled it off, to be quite uh, completely honest. Um, it just sort of came together. I don't know. I made some made some good moves on fresh tires on restarts and and made my way up the field i know that passing was going to be super difficult so i was just trying to get you know track position and you know in the first run i ran the top side the whole time and it sort of tires weren't very happy but they also weren't terrible um but then i saw on the second run you really needed to run the bottom just to be able to make it on fuel we were so close um if it wasn't for that delayed uh, green i definitely would have made it because i was dry going across the line i mean i needed to be pushed back to the start finish line <laughs> what well, well, I had to do my to to for my winter stuff. So yeah, um you know, gotta say thanks to all my QCR guys. Um it was an awesome result.
for us as a team. Um, you know, good hard racing, a lot of fun. Uh, I love this track. Uh, and to be completely honest, I wasn't really expecting after qualifying to have such a good run, but I was just able to make it work by by saving enough fuel and making it to the end there. It was a tight race on strategy, all things considered. We saw a few cautions, not all too many, and the last stretch of the race not broken up tonight. You imagine how close it was on fuel, but one thing I also want to mention, multi-groove track here in Chicagoland. The high side and the low side both working, and the bottom side really coming on its own later in this race relative to the beginning, and we saw you and many others trying to utilize both sides of the track to eventually find success. So what was it like knowing not only the pressure from DJ Stagner, but also the laying into the rubber made a huge impact on the lead battle? Yeah, it, I was definitely feeling the pressure that whole time, especially Zellner and then DJ in the last two laps. You know, I knew that DJ is, was really good on those old tires, and when he got by Scott, I got a little nervous, but I think if he had a little more time, he would have got by me, but it was just too late by the time he got past Scott. It's just so tough to pass here. I mean, my tires at the end there were 64 on the right front and 57 on the right rear, and I was, I was definitely sliding the rears a bit, getting corner exit, but I knew that as the laps were counting down, I could afford to do that as long as I didn't make any big slip-ups. Um, yeah, I think... I think, you know, obviously I felt comfortable at the top. I ran the whole first run up there. Um, but it, like I said, just to be able to make it on fuel, you had to run the bottom. I mean, that's why I was running through the, uh, through the apron on the start finish straight every time. And I was leading It's just, I needed to be able to save the distance and, 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 you know, be able to uh, make it to the end there. So, you know, this is kind of how I expected um, last week to pan out, or Vegas to pan out, where I was just able to save to the end, and and unfortunately that got uh, that got um, kiboshed by some uh, some intent wrecking. But um, you know, uh, this is you know sort of what I felt like last week was going to be, but it really got to play out. So you know, it wasn't really that different on strategy. Everybody sort of ran the same strategy. It was just depending on what uh, what lane you wanted to run. Um, Seemed like everybody was kind of following me on the bottom, just trying to make up time down there. But yeah, it it, ca it really came in. It wasn't very, didn't feel very good down there during practice, and and even at the start of the race, it didn't feel that great. But it really came in. I mean, there were Adam and DJ were running the bottom that whole time during the first stint, and they were saying that, or Adam was saying it was working really well. So, um, you know, took that intel and took it into the second run and knew that I could make it work down there just to make the fuel work. So it wasn't going to lose me time. So just committed to it early, and it, it made it work out. So. And it looks like, as of recent, committed to the checkered flag. Two wins in the last four races, and anyone can win a Talladega. Which is up next on the schedule, mind Oof. you, 70 laps. Oh, boy, we're back at the play tracks. <laughs> yeah, it didn't go so great for me last time, but I, I came in there with a lot of confidence, and then it just it all blew up pretty quick. Um, you know, when we were, last time when we were at Daytona, I felt like Chad and I were a really good partnership. So I'm hoping that we can get linked up there and, and, and get cracking. Um, just hoping that I can have a little bit better luck there. You know, as you said, anybody could win there and it's all down to, you know, however lucky you get and where you be at the right spot. So hopefully we can make it work and be there at the end. So. Looking to be there at the end yet again. Lucas Lodato, the checkered flag is yours tonight. If you have any final shout outs you'd like to make, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, as always, to everybody for watching and for you guys putting the broadcast on. Um, thank you to my girlfriend, Lily, for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks to Cincy Light for the delicious beer. I'm drinking one right now already in celebration, so thank you very much there. Um, thanks to Cody, if you're still watching, for checking in. Thank you. Um, uh, thanks to all my Bearcat Motorsports guys and all my QCR guys, as I said before. So, yeah, very excited uh, about this win, so glad to... Uh, Glad to get that oval off my back. Get, get a good oval win. So, an oval win, long time coming, as we've been mentioning now for a few weeks. Looks like not too far after the first. Lucas Lodato, it's a crooked number, the checkered flag in Chicago land. Thank you for your time. Thanks, guys. Lodato on the move. That concludes our podium interviews for tonight's event. Lucas Lodato winning from DJ Stagner in second and Scott Zellner. There in third. Just like that, Alex, another night of racing has come to a close, and Ladonna is back on top. What are your final thoughts as we leave Chicago and head down south for an exciting plate race in Talladega next? Well, it's going to be interesting now, as what we saw here is nothing close to Talladega. What we saw 
interesting tire strategies between people, different lanes being used, and it came down to almost a fuel mileage race. But in the end, it came down with Lucas Lodano getting the W. Now, everything is going to be turned up on its head next week as we head to Talladega, a track where I have found success, but it's very hard to come by. You have to know exactly what you are doing, and to be a good plate driver it means to be an aggressive driver. So we may see a first-time winner, or could we see a Highline legend go back to victory lane? Well, we're all going to find that out in just a week's time. With that being said, you've been watching exclusive coverage tonight from Chicagoland Speedway in the Highline Racing League. We'd like to thank Westlake Royal Building Products for their continued support of the Premier Series, and we hope you tune in. Next, we'll be live on FTN on Saturday with a doubleheader. It's going to be actually three races when it comes down to it. VOR with two races at Gateway and Ben Saturday Night Thunder continuing their championship quest. So stay tuned. We'd love to have you back on FTN. I've been David Kreutz alongside Alexander Balderas and we hope you tune in for our next presentation. You've been watching the Highline Racing League at the Chicagoland Speedway. We hope you have a fantastic night.